Hello. So this email's from Mona, and um, it's quite long, and there's quite a few questions, so settle in. And Mona writes, my eating disorder started when I was 15, and my weight dropped quite low. I'm not quite as low as other people's. I worked with a therapist for about two years. My mother made me gain weight and um, had phases where the eating disorder was fairly quiet. But recently I realized that it was never 100% gone. There was still a lot of guilt around food. Whenever I started exercising for fun, I caught myself every time. But sooner or later, it's because I wanted to change my body. When I was 18, I went to Canada for half a year and gained a lot of weight. After I came back, the first thing my grandmother said was, oh, your thighs have really got bigger. I felt disgusted by the way I looked. This time I lost weight in a healthy way, in inverted commas, and it kind of plateaued. I'm now 20 years old and I realised it never truly got better. In the summer I made the plan to full on engage in my eating disorder behaviours again and lose weight, just to prove that I can still do it. I also struggle a lot with accepting that I actually have anorexia. Um, your videos here were helpful. Um, nobody would sit and watch them who didn't have an eating disorder. That's true. Hate to say it. Nobody looks at my face unless they've got an eating disorder. Well, apart from my husband and a few other people. All right, so, and my husband doesn't watch my YouTube videos. Thank God. <laughs> um, so I promised myself that I would stop on the day when I fly home again. I study medicine in England and I fly back to Germany for Christmas. I eat 800 cows. At, oh, I'm not going to say that. I wouldn't go lower calorie wise to get myself to exercise more because with less calories, I could concentrate using this. So how do I deserve recovery? I feel like I'm not strict enough. Other people exercise every day for multiple hours and even eat less and their thoughts are probably stronger. On the other hand, I know I have to recover because I miss out on everything. Friends, sleep, my mind is consumed with foods and eating disorder thoughts. Part of my plan was to lose the weight so I've got a buffer to gain weight while I relearn eating normally. That's a bad idea. Everybody thinks that never works out. On the 15th, I will fully engage in recovery. I ordered your book, which I'm excited to read, and it arrives on Monday. But I've got some questions. One, if I eat without restriction, will I stop gaining weight? It seems that it worked really well for you, but has it worked for other people? Will it work for me? Okay, so I'll answer that first question with another question. How would it serve your body to continue gaining weight forever and ever and ever and ever? Do you think that your body has wants to do that? Do you think that your body has any interest in doing that? Why the fuck would your body want to do that? So yes, your body is an intelligent organism. It doesn't serve your body to gain weight forever and ever and ever. Why would it want to do that? Your body wants to gain weight to get healthy, to get to the weight it's supposed to be at and to protect itself. It doesn't want to just gain weight into oblivion and never stop. That doesn't make any sense. Um, but everybody with an eating disorder thinks that. I did too. Don't worry about it. Just ignore it. Two, how do I deal with comments from my mother and grandmother? For example, in August, my mother, who was really slim, was sitting next to me and pointing out that there's so much fat on her belly. I was upset because there literally is no fat, and I grabbed my belly and said, look at this fat, or what you've got is skin. She replied, oh, well, where did all this fat come from? She didn't mean to hurt me, but this really hit close to home as I was trying to accept my body. Another example, I was wearing a white pair of pants for my birthday. I started exercising and eating better shortly afterwards and was wearing the white pants again after I'd lost some weight. Uh, so my mother said the white pants look better on me now. Um, I, you lost me, I have to admit, um, on all of that. But So this is something you just need to learn how to not allow comments from other people to affect you. I know that's so much easier said than done. But also if you intend to learn that and just to allow those comments to wash off you, water off a duck's back, if that's your intention and you want to train yourself to do that, you absolutely can train yourself to do that if you're determined. Um, and hopefully, if you've got the book, that's going to rehabilitate, rewire, recover, has got a toolkit in it with sort of techniques to help you gain a little bit more control over what your brain listens to and what it doesn't. Okay, third question. I look really young and that bothers me quite a lot. When I'm at a normal weight, my cheeks are really chubby. How can I rewire my brain so it doesn't focus on this whenever I look in the mirror and take a picture? Hmm, well, it's good that we just talked about that. Book has got a toolkit um, of rewiring, but really it's the same, the way that we re will rewire anything um, depends sort of almost on the relationship that you get with your own brain. Telling somebody 
exactly, well, this is how you rewire this thought is a bit like trying to tell them this is how you bend your arm. Like if you try to explain to somebody how do you, you know, if you ask the question, how do you bend your arm, and you try and explain to them, you don't really like, well, I contract this muscle and that. It's just too complicated. It's just something that we work out how to do. And knowing your own brain and rewiring is a bit like that. So it is quite difficult to say to somebody exactly how you rewire. But if you have the intention to stop thinking negatively about your own body, then you're going to work out how to do that. And it starts with any sort of negative thought, even writing that, you know, like in a negative way, my cheeks are really trubby. Your cheeks are your cheeks. Stop labeling them and calling them something. Okay, number four. As I'm in medical school, it's really hard not to focus on how a healthy weight is supposed to look like. My friends who are medics as well are also quite body nutrition f focused. They don't have eating disorders, but comment mindlessly. How do I deal with them talking about the keto diet they're on, or how much weight they gained, or how bad and some and healthy some foods are? If I eat unrestricted all the foods that they eat and gain weight from eating them, how do I know? If I eat unrestricted and eat all the foods they eat and gain weight from eating them, how do I know when the weight gain will stop once I reach my body's natural weight? Mona, your body knows when to stop. Like you don't need to micromanage this. Have you not been listening to anything I've ever said? You do not need to micromanage your weight gain. Stop underestimating your body. You, as a medic, of anybody should know how intelligent and amazing the human body is. And yet you're sitting there going, like, how's my body going to know when to stop gaining weight? Come on, Mona. The human body is incredible. And it's been doing this for thousands of years. And you've got medic friends that run the keto diet. That's kind of fucked up because there is nothing scientific that says that the keto diet is a good idea. It's a really bad idea, actually. Um, and so I, I'm actually really worried that you've got medic friends that would do that to their bodies. Um, but also I know that that's probably not abnormal because you know, like medics are not nutrition experts, that's for sure. Certainly not eating disorder experts. And I think that, you know, like, you can, you probably got friends that do lots of stupid shit, but do you let all of their stupid shit affect you? And probably not, right? You've probably got some friends that wear really dumb clothes and have really dumb haircuts as well. But you don't go out and cut your hair that way and put those clothes on and be like, well, because my friends are doing it, I've got to do it. But your brain is hyper-focused on food, nutrition, and exercise. So you've got to become aware that you are hyper-aware about these things. And one of the rewiring things is you've got to train your brain to not give a shit about what diet anybody else is on. And you look like you probably are in a position where you might be able to educate some of your medic friends as well as to they need to stop doing stupid shit to their own bodies. So basically the takeaway from that is just because somebody's doing stupid shit to their body doesn't mean that you have to do stupid shit to your body. I hope that helps. <laughs> it was a long email, and I hope that by now, by the time I got, got around to it, because you probably wrote that email half a year ago, so I hope that you've read Rehabilitate, Rewire, Recover, and that the rewiring process makes a little bit more sense to you. Speaking of which, everybody, um, so rehabilitate, rewire, recover is 50% about neural rewiring. It's nutritional rehabilitation and neural rewiring. So I talk kind of equally, I hope, about both those things in that book, which is a bloody brick. It's huge. Um, I'm now going to write a smaller book to sort of accompany that, which is just going to be specifically on neural rewiring and giving examples really of like the learned thoughts, the learned behaviors, the learned actions, and all these things that our brains learn all the time actually, but when we have an eating disorder and really focusing in just on neural rewiring for eating disorders. So if you are currently in recovery or fully recovered and you have, you have identified a thought pattern, a behavioral pattern, an action, a reaction that you know that you need to neurally rewire in order to recover and you've been sort of working on that process, or if you're fully recovered and you did work on that process and you, you, you managed to rewire certain things, certain actions and reactions. Um, I've, I have a survey that I'm going to link to in the comments of this video because whenever I write a book, I always want the, the book to be um, written by and focused on people who are in recovery. So I rarely ask the opinion of, say, doctors, psychologists, treatment professionals that have not experienced an eating disorder themselves because I really want the things that I produce to be written by people who have 
lived experience of eating disorders, not theory, lived experience that can say, this is the way I did this, this is the way this felt for me. That's what I think is really important because that's what I think is so missing in eating disorder literature. So I would love your input. I've got a survey and I, it's, you actually have to write, it's not like a tick box survey because I want to use your words. I want to use your thoughts. I want to use how things felt for you, how the rewiring process felt for you, how you did that, how you went about that, what you would want people to understand about that, what you learned through that. So you actually have to write stuff if you want to take this survey. Sorry about that. But it will be really helpful. I'll link to it in the, um, in the notes to this. And so it's if you're in recovery or fully recovered and you have thoughts or experience on rewiring your brain, that's who I want to take this. If you would, if you would take the time. Probably take 10 minutes. Depends how much you want to write. If you want to write a lot, go for it. I would love that. Thanks in advance. Bye.